Hello everyone, this is Dan, Dan Spawn. Here it's October the 6th, 2015. I'm showing you some videos of um, Vietnam in uh, April of 2000, no, April of 1970 to April of 1971. This is at uh, Camp Monahan's, Marine Corps Base Camp Monahan's outside Da Nang. This big uh, lifting in a guard tower around around the perimeter. I didn't realize that this was on there, but here we go. These are all U.S. Marines rebuilding uh, some sort of roof. Now here's a bunch of Marines at China Beach, which is south of Monkey Mountain, and uh, I can't see. I wish it was more more light, but uh, I think there's. There's uh, Lieutenant Mike there. I won't give last names, but Lieutenant Mike's there. Just the nice beach. I don't know the quarterback. And this was kind of a relaxation place for everybody. There's Lieutenant Mike trying to get some some tackles in there in the, in the water. I had a chance to go there maybe once, maybe twice. That was it. We'd go there on a Sunday afternoon down to the real China Beach outside of Da Nang, just south of Monkey Mountain and Marble Mountain. These videos are now 45 years old, transported, translated into a DVD. So some of the, some of the brightness is wearing off a bit. Uh, this is one of the camps we were at. It's probably Camp Monahan taken from a, uh, one of the yeah, that's Camp Monahan, and across the road there, toward that hillside, is the Ammo Supply Point One and Two. Here's somebody getting arrested. I think that's uh, that's Lieutenant D there. He got himself a Viet Cong. There's Lieutenant Mike in the background. Now this is on the corner of the main road, Highway One. Nobody's supposed to be out there standing, but they were standing out there probably probably buying drugs or something. This is going through Wakhan Village, north of Da Nang. It's all a refugee village. These people came down from Way City and probably all the way from North Vietnam. And there's about 15 or 20,000 people living there in makeshift huts. And that's us in the, in the uh, going through the marketplace. Uh, we didn't stop and get out, but we would always stop. You notice the ladies don't like their photographs taken, so they put their 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 hat down so that uh, the camera won't show them. This is a lake that was on the uh, on the base camp Red Beach. This is outside outside of Da Nang, a couple of miles to see the church back there. That was one of the old French churches built maybe 50 or 100 years ago before the war even started. And uh, this is when I was working in the, quote, Vietnamization program, which uh, was to try to give excess materials to the Vietnamese in this village, these vill several villages, to, so they could build bunkers and facilities or whatever they needed. The people look fairly safe. We don't think they're Viet Cong. There's a, there's a Catholic nun there. She's still there. Kind of like, uh, wonder why they never took care of her. But uh, I guess it was safe enough for them to be there. And all these little kids. And there's somebody, that's me picking up some one of them there, put her on my shoulder. Uh, anyway, there's a bunch of kids. There was kids all over the place, all the time. Here we are driving one of the dirt roads going through those villages. This is not the main road. The main road was, was Highway 1. We're on a side road that was going inland away, and there's mountains there. And the mountains uh, were probably held by the, the enemy. And this is me again in, in front of a church, and there's some rice fields all over there. You see it's a beautiful country. There's another church right there. And um, this is back on the base, Camp Red Beach. There's me and there's uh, Lieutenant Bill there on the left. He's an Army 
uh, lieutenant had been there about six or eight months, and it's, I guess that's Lieutenant Dan saying it's hot. It was always hot there, except when it rained. Then it, the rain made it feel cold. It was uh, looking up to Hyvon Mountains, up to the pass. This is uh, the going away party, I guess, of uh, Chief Massengale, a Navy uh, Navy chief there, a medic who was living in the in the bunker or in the in the hooch next door to mine. It's Lieutenant Dan in the middle and Chief Massengale are laughing on the left. He was leaving to come back. I think he had been there two tours. And that was our that was our there's the doc. He's the doctor. Uh, I forgot his name really, but I remember Massengale. And that's the kind of beer they brought to us, uh, Ham's beer. There's Massengale with his traveling uniform on. He's headed back. Uh, I don't know what rank he was, probably about an E6. And here we are going through another village, just walking around. There's a Sergeant King, and I forget the other guy's name. Sergeant King had been there two tours, and he worked in a Vietnamization program for a while as well. There, that might have been somebody working for the village chief, some of the local folks. Uh, in the Vietnamization program, we had the word as name tag, which was a perfect target. I don't know why we wore that name tag. It was too easy to get shot at. But uh, fortunately, that never happened. Uh, going from one village to the other, you always had a, a rifle, a pistol, I always had them tucked away best we could. Um, of course, we were exposed pretty badly here if we ever ran into the wrong people. And th these people, these citizens here, they tell they would tell us if it's a safe place. That's why we kind of uh, were more relaxed looking there. That's another church. Looks like we're just walking around this, this village. It doesn't really look it, but there was a war going on here and there and everywhere. Hopefully you weren't there is what, uh, what you thought. We got around in a Jeep. I think I had a shotgun there, didn't I? Yeah, a shotgun. They were showing the way the people lived. They all lived in huts. They lived through the rainstorms and the monsoons and, and everything. Here's a papa sign coming down. There's some rice fields in the mountains to the north. And uh, I can remember seeing air, aircraft, F-4s coming in and doing dive bombs, bombing out areas certain times. I've seen uh, the B-52 strikes from there a couple of times. That's looking out toward the coast, actually. And here's some of the villages, real pretty, real real picturesque. And uh, the huts, huts look fairly good there. There's some of their transportation. We call them, uh, uh, I forget what you call those little vehicles. Um, there, they had pigs and chickens and half of their groceries on those buildings. I know some vehicles. Here's the trash area over in uh, right outside Da Nang. People live there looking for trash that was valuable. Try to get you to stop your vehicle. That's one thing you didn't want to do is stop your vehicle. They could throw you out and steal the vehicle. Here I am on a helicopter. I had two helicopter rides from Da Nang going south. One was to... Uh, landing zone or one was to a place called Ross. It was a firebase Ross. And this is going south. You see all the rice paddies and the roads and the mountains in the background. And I think we went to the other side of those mountains. See all the rice paddies. All that was done by manual labor. And uh, there's like cemeteries there and then the houses. And months would go by and nothing would happen and all of a sudden there'd be a big fight, big 
firefighter or attack or something like that. Here's me sticking my head out the window. Uh, it looked really nice, looked safe and calm for the moment. You never knew what was going to happen next. And the helicopters either flew low so they uh, would be faster than somebody could shoot at them, or they flew fairly high so that nobody could shoot at them. So we were up there probably five, four or 5,000 feet. And uh, yeah, about, about 4,000 feet. And you go from one village to the next, that's Highway 1, the main highway that goes through several villages all the way going south to a place called Landing Zone Baldy, or uh, we're coming in close for landing, looks like, or Firebase uh, Ross. And uh, there's the base. Looks like it came into a very easy approach there. That must be Baldy because uh, at Firebase Ross, you didn't come in with an easy approach. You, you sort of dive bombed it with a circular spiral. There's an OV-10 Bronco shooting uh, some targets, some bad guys down there. Remember, he would make a round and shoot three or four times. You see the Bronco coming from the clouds, and you'd hear the AK-47 shooting back at him. And then after about the fifth or sixth attempt of coming down, you didn't hear anything more, so he must have got the bad guys. I think this is really landing zone or yeah, Firebase Ross, which was the uh, more dangerous one to go to. You can see that's only about a half a mile away. Uh, it's at Ross. Uh, it's probably 30, 40 miles south of uh, Da Nang and about 20 miles inland from the coast, right at the edge of the mountains. Here we go on a takeoff. And you see he's, he's spiraling up to get it. Try to land, try to take off over the base rather than over the rice paddy areas. And um, I was fortunate enough to get a a flight like that because not many people did, unless they were really really going out to the to the to the war zone area. And uh, you see what's down there. There's more more villages and rice paddies everywhere that. That uh, can you hear me? Rice paddies everywhere, and uh, you can hear, you can see we're cycling around. And these guys, these pilots, knew what they were doing, but I wasn't quite sure. Here we are. This is at uh, maybe this is landing zone uh, El, uh, Baldy. Baldy and Ross were fairly close to each other. Ross being further inland. And you see the bomb craters in the areas there, all over. Those are all bomb craters you're looking at all over the place. Bombs are dropped. Now, this is a fire base, and I think it's called, um, I, I looked it up on the Internet, LZ Buzzard, Landing Zone Buzzard, up in the uh, Quezon Mountains, south of Da Nang. Here we go. There's, I'm off the air, helicopter now, and there we go. This is on Highway 1, a very uh, heavily used road. It was blacktopped. The Navy Seabees uh, built the road and blacktopped it. When the monsoons came and the floods, all the fields flooded, people were you know, just trying to get to high ground, getting on rooftops. And then when the, when the rains, when the roads finally emptied, they would put their rice on the roads trying to dry it off. And it created big traffic jams. I'm not sure where this is. This is uh, right off the road there. Oh, we had some candies. Some candies giving them to the kitties. Whatever they were. Candies, yeah. It's hard to picture those kids are now 50, 55 years old if they're still living. There's some more, more, all the, all the villages were around the highway, or I guess they put the highway in through the villages. And, um, it's, 